Uh, hey everyone, uh, today I have, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Alright, hello, uh, my name is Jake <laughs> Chang. I'm a Chippewa of Nawash, born and raised in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, I recently graduated from McMaster University and I work for the Ontario Federation of Indigenous Friendship Centers. Okay, that's really cool. And now that's all around Ontario here, is, is it connected with any part of Canada? Well, um, there's, there's a broader... There's like a broader national yeah. national center uh, organization, but uh, we're, we're focused primarily in Ontario. Okay, that's good. So before we get started anyways, I'd like to ask, uh, how's everything going with work life, family and friends? And you know, do you have any other like projects starting up? <laughs> good buddy, everything's good, man. I haven't seen you in fun. Like, I don't know, it's been a, been a couple years, right? Oh yeah. Um, everything's good, man. I just graduated, started started the real life, real work. Yeah, I heard you're married, by time. the way. I'm not. So, I, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not at all. Um, um, no, we're, we're coming up on 10 years, though, so. Oh, holy shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah so, I, get, I get that a lot, man. I get that a lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> didn't you claim it, though? You're like, I claim that I am married. I have vowed myself to this lady. So, when when are you tying the knot? Did you get engaged? Or? No, no, we're not. no, we're not. Oh my <laughs> no, God. we're not engaged. When you're sneaky. Yeah, that's, um, that's how I do. Your background in the history too of uh, the Chippewa people. That'd be cool to actually hear about. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, uh, Chippewa of Nawash is. Uh, I'm Chippewa of Nawash from Cape Croker up. Um, up it's just past Owen Sound, uh, and Chippewa are, yeah. are we're Ojibwe, right? Is it closer to Sudbury? No. Okay. Wait, maybe. I don't know. I'm bad with geography. I just know it's pencil and so. Um, no worries, man. Just go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what's it called? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Chippewa, Chippewa of Nawash, we're, we're Ojibwe, right? And Ojibwe's are, like, typically displaced people, so we're spread out across, um, across, like, Ontario, in, in the States, um, yeah. all over, right? But even in uh, Montreal and everything, so... We're all over it, and, and so my reserve is actually only made up of 800 people, and there's... Holy two, shit. Yeah, so there's nice, man. there's 2,000 <laughs> over all of us. It's beautiful up there, though. It's, it's beautiful. Nice, yeah. Um, so do you follow, like, a type of trail? Is, was there, like, an old trail that... Because I know that you showed that there's, like, an area, a part of Ontario where all the natives would go. Like, um, I think one was in between, I want to say, like, Caledonia the around that area. The hold the man track. The so that's track. that's a okay. different that's a different thing. What it, what it was was that was the land promised to us, mm -hmm. and um, so a lot of people don't know this, but but okay. it's it's really interesting. So hereditary chiefs and and the council and, and everyone has to come to an agreement that uh, this land is for for sale. And so a big part of what's going on in um, in Six Nations right now the the um, um, the protests and, and everything that's going on is because they, they sold um, X amount of land. I'm not going to speak unless I know for sure the, the thing for like four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like and, and it was yeah. the the elected chief um, that sold it when when they okay. don't have the right to sell it on on themselves. They have to consult yeah. and, and hereditary chiefs. And what at least that's yeah. my understanding. That's not on my reserve, so I'm not fully informed. But that's my understanding of that. Oh, up in your reserve, okay. Yeah, no, no, okay. that's that's Six Nations. So, so the Hall of the Man tract is yeah. Six Nations is just a little bit part of it, like oh, Oakville, okay. Oakville, all of Hamilton, all the way north past Guelph, everything. It's all supposed to be indigenous land, but I guess over time treaties were broken and then they were sold. Like, like okay. the sad part is like. Green, Why do you think that happened though? I think. You know what? I, like greed infiltrated our people too. Like it's not, you can't, you can't get away from it. There's no, there's no way, right? So, so yeah. just like, no, non consultation and, and and just all that. Just say yeah, yeah, take it, take it. No one's using it. It's it doesn't matter though, right? This was promised in treaties that are are hundreds of years old, right? So, okay. really, really like, it, it's it's shocking to see the Haldeman track like. Uh, um, it's it's just it's just crazy how much is left from from how much uh, we were yeah. we were promised and and you know it's it's we're, we live in the age of social. It's so media. odd that you say promise though, because it's like some it should have been like it was already promised to like oh to it was a people it was a treaty <laughs> it was a treaty right so like that that was the land but over time you know they chip away and and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they get the the ones that uh, let greed infiltrate them and it's it's super unfortunate but like at the end of the day chip away okay so no no so that's six nations 
Okay. All the man tracks, Six Nations. All right. With that. um, so when I was younger, actually, my mom sent me out to uh, like go to camp because I had like a girlfriend at the time. She's like, oh, you know, you don't want to have kids at the age of like Who's 13. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's she? You heard from me? How's she doing? She's doing okay, man. Um, I haven't really seen her in a long time. I, mean, I haven't seen her in ten years, probably. How long? Ten years. Yeah, I don't like keep in touch with her. I'm not really sure where he is, where she is at the moment. I don't know. Yeah. I call her he, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was sent off to uh, a Chippewa camp of the sort down, and I guess like they actually took us like an hour and a half or two. It's called Camp Chippewa, and it's like to me it was out in the middle of nowhere. I was like, okay, where am I going? And I don't think they really taught people too much about it. I'm like, why don't you like? Show a little bit more about it, but I don't know, man. Like you, I have like ADHD, so I'm like going crazy, and yeah. there's too many thoughts, right? No matter what, it's all cool. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so ch no, so that's actually super interesting that you bring up. A, a lot of people okay. don't don't talk about it um, and, and the information behind it because they just they don't know. They they just don't know. Like I I, I don't know a lot. Like I'm still very early on like my journey of like rediscovering like my culture that was taken from my grandma, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. Like at, at at the end of the day, it's cool. Like if you don't know, it's cool. It, as the the thought is that like you're trying to have an understanding, you're trying to know, you're trying okay. to understand the culture. That's the purpose because I'm st like I grew up super whitewashed, right? Yeah. So so there's no there's no reason to be like oh like uh, I'm, I, I'm sorry I didn't know. Like no no, it's good that you're you're receptive <laughs> that you're receptive to knowing, right? So I, I think that's all that 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 is. Absolutely. With the federal statutory holiday, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Um, being, I think that's an extremely important part of who we are as like Canadians and I guess everyone else as a whole to um, how do you feel about some of the other provinces not really enacting it as a statutory holiday and why do you think maybe they should change it to a statutory holiday? Um, you know, I, I think I haven't really developed enough of a, a solid opinion on whether or not it should be a statutory holiday. As, in reality, like, how much are people going to do on their day off in acknowledgement of culture? You know, there's always going to be ignorant yeah, people right there, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, workplaces do a good job of, of you know, training and, 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 and awareness and, and where they can, right? Um, so, like, I mean, it not being a statutory holiday isn't that big of a deal. I think the bigger deal is, is recognition of, of a day that's, that's about... The understanding of, of, of the real history, not the not the the, the fake stuff we're, we're taught in school, right? So mm -hmm. I think that I think that it's really it's really really to each his own. But for me, it's just I'd like to see that there's some sort of willingness to have a better understanding of you know indigenous relations, the history of what's going on, and, and not mm -hmm. only that, like 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 my um, the executive director Gertie May at uh, okay. OFIFC has said. Like, <clears throat> She she doesn't want this to be a sad day, you know. We we don't want to talk about. Um, okay. We don't want to talk too much about the, the bad stuff. We know what happened, right? We know what happened. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's take this as a day of, of, of learning, and and of, of bettering our understanding of our own culture that was taken from us, right? And and then helping spread our culture, you know. For anyone that doesn't know, though, the Catholic schools and all of that, and there were other um, issues where people were just forced into um, an area where they just wouldn't be around other people and then they had illnesses and such and, and all that right because not everyone knows and that's like something that I think yeah. that murder rape. Into it. yeah I didn't even want to yeah. say that but I had yeah. it written down I deleted yeah. that out of there a lot like, of bad stuff not, yeah. a lot of bad stuff yeah um, and at the time I think tu tuberculosis was um, going through even just the crowds of a lot of other people and then the buildings I found out were actually like burning down because they weren't well kept or anything mm -hmm. like that like the materials I guess they used or the people not looking after the lights and the electricity and like that's just a whole nother type of torture so 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 here here's something that I find interesting and I find the yeah. most important one of the most important aspects of, of understanding and September 30th and reconciliation itself is it, it wasn't just residential schools you have to have an understanding that they wanted to get rid of Indian we were called the Indian problem so they, they, and in the platform promise of uh, Sir Johnny McDonald, the, the first prime minister ever of Canada, he, he, you know, promised to get rid of as many Native Americans as possible to make way for European settlers. 
And when we couldn't, when they couldn't get rid of us, when they're like, man, we, these guys are good, man. Like we can't get them all. When, when they, when they couldn't, when they figured out we couldn't do that, they said, okay, we're gonna segregate them to reserves. And so they, they chose the worst land possible for growing, for fertilization, for, for just living. And then they said, okay, here, here's this, your land, leave us alone, like get out of here. And then so I guess like still, there's obviously still gonna be problems. They're still, they're still gonna wanna get rid of us. So they called us the Indian problem. In parliament, it's in all of these written documents. Uh, the, the, the verbiage okay. is insane. And so here's, here's what, what I was leading into. The reason residential schools were created was because they, they had an understanding that, that, hey, we're not gonna get rid of, of these, these indigenous people. Like, so instead of killing the Indian, we can kill the Indian and the child. So that was the purpose of bringing people to residential schools. Was, yeah. was getting rid of their culture, stripping them. You know, their 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 tongues were poked with uh, with needles if they would speak their their own language. Um, you know, you weren't allowed to practice culture tradition. When so when it, when one of your friends died, you couldn't um, couldn't do uh, the proper ceremony. Uh, you, you'd be punished. Like you, they were taken away from their culture, abused. And so people wonder why there's all this substance abuse problems and, and all that in their history. It's because there's trauma and there's intergenerational trauma. Mm. But here's what we need to understand is that it doesn't end there. That's the, this is a whole system that was set up to destroy our people. Our, our culture, it was a genocide. So when we talk about that, yeah, my great grandfather's buried at, at Shingawak Reserve, um, but, uh, or Shingawak uh, Residential School. But, but, Let's not. Let's go. Let's go closer to that. Let's my grand my grandmother. So, I don't really know much about her early life, but I know that she was so poor. Um, like she she literally like like was living in a barn. And and so, uh, the Indian agents, which were white people from the government, that came on and, and grabbed kids. Um, so, the Indian agents found her and they took her and put her in. Foster homes. Fosters, foster homes, right? orphanages and stuff. Foster yeah. homes. So foster home in itself it was was an abusive system. You know, indigenous kids even now today are two and a half more times uh, likely to suffer from from malnutrition or neglect. Mm -hmm. um, and that's twenty twenty one. Um, so I know that my grandmother, and this is where it gets very very deep. Um, so my grandmother, you know, no one, everyone in my family is named after someone, right? And, and but Scott is my dad's name. And we never understood why his name was Scott, um, but the reason why was because she jumped from so many foster homes, foster homes, foster homes, and the only foster parent she had that didn't um, uh, molest or beat her, his name was Scott. So she named her firstborn Scott. Yeah, and I was wondering too, because uh, like, I wondered what your relativity to uh, Crookshank was, and I looked it up, and it had to do with like Scotland and such. Like, yeah. And it was from, I think, the Picton tribe people up there in Scotland. Like, there were like a select, like, there are tribes in different communities, even like mm -hmm. different like uh, subcategories, I guess, of like white people up there mm -hmm. too. So, and Scotland's a beautiful place. Like, the animals and shit out there, like, yeah. you just wouldn't see them. It's like a mystical reindeer. Like, really, you should check some of them out sometime. Yeah, so like, yeah, exactly. Like Crookshank's from from my white side, right? But mm -hmm. um, so Scott was because um, she really wanted to, you know, give thanks to, to that guy who, who was her savior, right? The thing is that like I, people need to understand that it's this whole system set up to destroy us, and it's not just the residential schools. Like we're we're so abused, you know. Um, indigenous kids make up fifty two percent of people um, under or fourteen and under in the uh, foster and, and and the mm -hmm. foster care system and out out of them then they're two and a half more times likely to uh, be uh, abused mistreated neglected or malnourished and then even from there they, they only represent seven percent of the overall population is it like different for the native people do they get treated do you think maybe even possibly worse more often than the other kids over there so I, the I center sure sure I, I think okay. the, the the I think well, the overall I, segregation of yeah. it was the, the main key and the point of how I think, awful it really was. So. Yeah, I, I think the system itself, sorry, I think the system itself is, is pretty abusive. Um, and, and I think it's, it's not, good. <laughs> obviously it's not good. But, but the problem really is that 
indigenous kids 14 and under make up 7% of the, that population, uh, that age group, that demographic, right? So that's a, a small subgroup that makes up 52% of the people in foster care. Yeah. So then, then when you take that, and on top of that, they're two and a half more, more times likely to be, again, malnutrition, uh, neglected, uh, abused. It's, it's, it's absurd. It, it's, it's really, it, it's crazy and it's damaging to our people. And then you have to ask yourself, why are we over, overrepresented in, in the foster care system? And then, and then you know, you can go from there. Then the, the damaging of, of childs that foster system does. Uh, okay, so why are Indigenous people so overrepresented in the criminal justice system? So th these are all compounding factors. It's and, and that that's what was my main point originally. That this yeah. is not just uh, a, a residential school thing. I mean, sure, insane how, how how much damage it did to our people. But it's an overall system to to take us up and just destroy us as people and our culture. And so that's that's a huge part that I want to get across for September 30th, is, okay. is the acknowledgement that it's not just the residential school system, because then that gives people the opportunity to say, wipe their hands, say, all right, whatever, provide the services, that's done, get over it, like, like every ignorant person does, right? But no, this entire system, it's far more deep-rooted to this, this is systemic race, racism, all over Canada. And, and it's, 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 um, it's something that, that has been addressed, but, these, these things take time, and I think the more awareness that we get to, towards the overall entirety of the system is, is something that's, it, it's just, it, it's imperative to, to our people becoming uh, becoming who we, who we need to be, right? All so, right, are there any like monuments or any other type of symbolic idols out there that you feel like may need to have changed that people don't know about? Otherwise, with Sir John A. Macdonald and maybe something to do with the government? Other than churches I think, and such, right? I think, I think in general, people need to understand that, you know, these statues aren't coming down for no reason, man. These yeah. these people sucked. You know, even people called J Sir John A. Macdonald uh, genocidal in his day. But, you know, we're, we're talking almost 200 years ago. So this guy was an animal. Uh, um, and, and Ryerson, the architect of, of residential schools, like, like these people even for their day standards, were not good people. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. it, it's just, they were just successful. They were good at what they did. And mm. and unfortunately, like there's gonna be people on the bad side that are good at what they did. And um, I don't think they should be celebrated. I think maybe they should be in a museum for sure. But uh, I mean, if, if, the, <laughs> if the governments aren't gonna take, take the, 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 the statues down themselves and preserve them and put them in, in, um, in, in museums, and, Come on, what do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen? Like, mm -hmm. I, there's tons of people that are willing to take a charge for it to to bring down a statue and, and you know create a sort of history and a movement. So, yeah, I, I think people need to understand that that this isn't just about a frustration thing because it, it largely is. This is about letting people know that these people sucked and we should not be idolizing these people. They 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 they, they were terrible on every level. Um, so that's that's what I want people to get. From 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 just more the idealistic standpoint of okay. of, of uh, sort of white figures in the nineteenth nineteenth century and and twentieth right. as well. So uh, Justin Trudeau or Justin Trudeau? <laughs> Trudeau. Where do we start? Yeah. Where do we start? You can talk all you want about. I mean, that was just a corny joke I threw in there. Yeah. To be okay. Honest. Okay. Justin. Yeah. Like... We're, we'll go on quite the tangent, man. Holy. <laughs> Every every politician's a joke. See, even Jug needs fake crying. Like it's just like. Um, have you heard of brutal. with his? Like I know it's a little bit off topic. I guess he's had. Uh, I guess he's had like a little bit of a history with his father. I guess being like more of an alcoholic, sort of like um, Sir John A. Macdonald was back in the Trudeau? day. <laughs> Trudeau? No. Um, uh, Singh, Mr. Jug Singh. Yeah. Yeah, Jug um, His father, I heard, was an alcoholic, oh, and then wow. he may have been. Like on his Wikipedia page, anyways, it shows I, had a really tough childhood. Anyways, I would check it out sometime though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you say, like the people that go into the power or whatever, they're good at what they do, right? Mm -hmm. And they know how to get that. Like people mm -hmm. are going on social media and connecting that way. Although I think for maybe to allow people to make change would be important in their life too. But mm -hmm. it takes time, and it's like a lot of painful hurt that if you yeah. were to do something on someone else, you you have to live with that same exact pain that you gave that person. Yeah, um, I, and I mean, I, I'm not saying Jug Meat doesn't want the best for Canadian people or anything. I just think if you're a politician, the odds of you being full of shit are pretty high. So there you um, go. I'm, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to take just... that away from him, right? So <laughs> yeah, that's good. Just a 
United States, the land of the free or the land of the stolen. And while singing the national anthem of O Canada, when we sing the O Canada line, should we should we say sing it in a more satirical way, right? Mm, no, no. <laughs> and here, here's, another, <laughs> here, here's another no, thing, man. Yeah, yeah. No, here's another thing. On one side of my family, you know, my grandma escaped communism and fled to this country and made a great life. But on the other side of my family, you know, the government literally destroyed our people. So it's 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 this is a great country founded on some horrible and horrific things. So I don't want to take away from the good that this country does. But at the same time, man, fuck. Yeah, so we were yeah. pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. So. Changes need to be done. So yeah. No, I, I don't think the, the, the national anthem needs to be changed at all. So what are some popular aboriginal dishes, if you know any? <laughs> Indian tacos, man. Indian tacos. You can't, you, can't, you can't go wrong with Indian tacos. All right. So Indian tacos <laughs> is basically, basically a scone. It's, it's, it's like a, a scone, I guess you guys call it. Scone. And uh, it's, it's a little bread thing, and then you, you get some nice venison or something, or ground up meat of so, some sort, you can, and you put it on, so, on top of the taco, and then you put, you know, shredded lettuce, tomatoes, a little sour cream, oh man. <laughs> Cheese? That shit's good, bro. Oh. I, I love corn soup. I love corn soup. It's not, it's not yellow corn, it's traditional. Um, Is that the multicolored corn by any chance? Like the one that's, have you seen that? <laughs> no, no, like no, 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 I know what you're talking about. No, no, it's not. It's, um... It's like a different kind of corn. It looks like a popcorn kernel, almost. Like it's a different kind of corn kernel, or a different okay. kind of corn. So, yeah. So no, it's 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 that. It's made with uh, some beef and, and uh, pork, and uh, okay. yeah, it's it's like supernatural. It's really bad. It's uh, well, <laughs> it's really good. And then and then the other one is is just straight up like uh, strawberry juice. You know, I love me some little little, little strawberry, strawberry juice. juice. I took it to my uh, my friend's uh, birthday party this summer, and everyone loved it. So. Yeah, if you guys want to try out, Google those three recipes, you'll find some nice stuff. Man. All right, sick. Yeah. Are there any other community events that Aboriginals take part in that maybe you could say that someone else could maybe embrace as well, too? I mean, just go go, go to powwow. Go to powwows. The, the neighboring uh, uh, community's powwow. So for us, it'd be okay. Six Nation. Just go to powwow. Support, support their economy, you know, um, and, and buy some traditional stuff. You know, keep, keep our culture alive. Do you want to explain to people what a powwow is? Because <laughs> not everyone knows. You know, hey, but... hey, good point. Um, a powwow is just a celebration. Uh, I'm not going to explain this correctly, I don't think, but it, it's essentially just a celebration. I, I forget what the the actual uh, purpose, the cultural purpose is, but it, it's just a big celebration. It's uh, on my reserve. It's a, it's a few days, and you know, there's there's lots of dances and, and celebrations and lots of food food trucks and and you know traditional food and, and uh, you know you can buy you can buy all sorts of um, you know clothing and and cool traditional items so it's uh, it's just a celebration you know a celebration where people right. I, I wish I could expand more on the actual cultural relativity on it but uh, that's fine before we end this I know that you put in a lot of zeal when it comes to uh, the family and the people around you so I have something for you oh yeah yeah but first uh, I'd like you to share a little bit about your personal experience being Aboriginal in Canada as like a as like a whole, and in your best words, what would it uh, mean most to you when it comes to people who would like to support Aboriginal people, and what would you like to see more? Mm. So, mm. a little bit about yourself okay. being Aboriginal, then. All right, so so like the truth is, I, I never really felt like I fit in because I was so whitewashed, but I was always the native kid, right? So like when people mm. have questions about. My culture and everything. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, then when I went out there on the reserve to play lacrosse, I was like, "This is sick!" Like I'm around my people, and you know, all the kids didn't like me because I'm just some whitewashed native kid. And tell you the truth, it was probably because I was a little arrogant back then. But you used um, to beat the crap out of people in lacrosse. Didn't ah, you? no, once in a while. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've got food a couple times, but it's just it's a medicine game. Sometimes you uh, sometimes you catch a licking and. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I got hurt a lot too, but anyways, that's concussion. Yeah, I get it, man. Yeah. I've been through it. They suck. Yeah, but um, you know, year um, and a half of healing of just like looking at things <laughs> yeah. and they're shaking. You get headaches when yeah. you think too hard. Like, mm. oh man, you almost feel like you're dumb because it's like oh, I'm thinking so hard, I'm getting a headache and yeah. like the side of my eyeball. Like, it yeah, was, it's wild. It's it's tough to look around. Like your eyes hurt, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's neither here nor there. Just what I was basically trying to say is that like uh, I I felt I never really really fit in anywhere because. I was 
like half uh, or, or a quarter native and I was always the native kid but I didn't really uh, really know anything so it's I, like I've had a lot of racist things said to me but they yeah. weren't they weren't they weren't like um, like they were just unknowingly ignorant they're like oh so you like live on the reserve right and it's like no I live down the street from yeah. that like you know what I mean and, and so like these things like they don't mean anything to the people who ask me right but to me it's just like like yeah, it's, it's like it's, people it's, assume that you're like straight out of the forest, right? Yeah, you just yeah exactly. Like... It's, 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 it's more annoying than anything. It, it, it's not like it hurt me to a point where I would cry, but I could see someone who's more sensitive being really upset by that. Yeah, because people don't understand, right? And yeah, yeah, and exactly. That. So, well, what's some advice that you would give to young Aboriginal people, the youth of Aboriginal people? What would you use our scholarships? Go to school. Go to school. Get a trade. Something. You know, we got uh, we got our. I, I'm not religious, but like, fuck, fuck man, our, our ancestors are watching us, whether whether you want to like it or not. And you know, I think we have a duty to to do as good as possible. And you know, okay. just e even if you're not overly spiritual, you know, just uh, just take part in, in cultural activities. Just just support support yourself as much as you can, because you know, my my grandma always used to say, you know, um, just by being alive, we're winning. Just by being alive, we're winning because they wanted us all dead. So I think that uh, by 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 having a job, having a life, having a wife, having kids, mm -hmm. keeping the family line going, I think we're doing a lot more than just winning. So just just get a get a good job or, or go to school or get a trade. Uh, use the grants and everything that are there to to help you. And uh, um, use you know we have mental health counseling. Use use the coverage. You know um, every, everyone needs to take care of their health and. We're, we're, we're people that have been beat down and and you know the interge intergenerational trauma is, is, is real um, so just take care of yourself you know take care of yourself and and who you can because it'll it'll um, it'll it'll catch up to you eventually is there something over there and it looks red in between that little pop figure and then that lighter the the clipo lighter or whatever oh here Do you see that oh. the red thing there you can take that oh what yeah, you can take that. Everyone. Look, <laughs> I'm paid. You're paid, paid. yeah. Um, what I'd like you to do with that is actually donate to any of the Aboriginal um, communities. I'd really like for you to do that, and then we can help other people out that way, man. Yeah, so. sure, sure. Let's do that, man. All right. All right. Before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, promote or share with uh, the people here today? Nope. Peace and love. That's it. Peace and love. Peace That's and love, it. Dog. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, my guy, it's man. nice to see you. Dog. <laughs> you know, well, it's been a couple years. Yeah. It's been a couple years. Um, All right, people. It's, it's a pleasure seeing you. Yeah. All right, we're going to go, people. Uh, we got stuff to do today. Peace out.